All right, let's solve a fractional differential equation. Looks scary, doesn't it? But it's not that bad, you'll see. Because here we have a half derivative of y. Well, let's just apply another half derivative to it and see what we get. So d of 1 half of the left hand side is d 1 half of the right hand side. And then the beautiful thing is the half half derivative is just a regular derivative. So y prime now becomes the sum of three terms. One is that half derivative of y term, the other one, the half derivative of x squared, and the last one, this constant times the half derivative of x to the 3 halves. Now, the first term is actually not that bad because a is minus half derivative of y, but notice the equation itself tells you what the half derivative of y is. It is minus y plus x squared plus 8 over 3 squared of pi x to the 3 halves. It's kind of nice. That is a differential equation. It tells you something about the derivative. And then for b and c, you just need to evaluate those half derivatives. Let's see what we get. So b is just a half derivative of x squared. Now, how do you calculate half derivatives? One derivative means one power comes down. Half derivative means half a power comes down. So sometimes something times x to the 3 halves. And the coefficients involve factorials, or more generally, gamma functions. So here is gamma to 2 plus 1 over gamma of 2 plus 1 half. So gamma of 3 over gamma of 5 halves. But gamma of 3 is just 2 factorial. Gamma of 5 halves, here it's easier to apply the uh, multiplicative rule. So I think it's just 3 halves times gamma of 3 halves times x to the 3 halves. Well, this is 2, and then we have 3 halves. Well, we can apply this once more. So 1 half gamma to 1 half of x to the 3 halves. And then I think we just get so 3 over 4. So that, I believe, I calculated another video, and we got square root of pi. It just kind of becomes a Gaussian integral. And then what we end up getting, if you calculate this, it's 8 over 3 square root of pi x to the 3 halves, which not to spoil anything, but it looks suspiciously like one of the terms in the differential equation. All right, last but not least, we just need to calculate the half derivative of x to the 3 halves right. with some constant, but I'll add it later. So half derivative of x to the 3 halves. All right, again, same thing. Half a power comes down. So x to the 3 halves minus 1 half is x to the 1 or just x, and then you just get, so you add 1 to that power, gamma of 5 halves, and you see, it's a gamma of 2. And I think gamma of 2 is just 1 factorial, and we calculated gamma of 5 halves, and in the end we get 3 square root of pi over 4x. Great! We calculated all the terms in the differential equation, so just put it together like collecting amulets or orbs. So let's see what tempo we get. Again, that was our differentiated equation, and if we now plug in all the terms, we get y prime is minus, let's see, minus y plus x squared plus 8 over 3 squared of pi, x to the 3 halves, 
Now the half derivative of x squared, we calculated it to be 8 over 3 squared of pi x to the 3 halves. And finally, the half derivative of x to the 3 halves, we calculated it to be 3 squared of pi over 4 x, no, x to the 1. But we also have this factor, 8 over 3 squared of pi. And now comes a huge cancellation party to which you're invited. So we have minus this term, cancels out with this term. And this thing, I believe, is just 2. So in the end, we get a very simple ordinary differential equation. y prime equals y, and again, minus x squared plus 2x. And this one is much easier to solve because it doesn't involve any fractional derivatives. And you could solve this using integrating factors, but here's a cool trick that my high school math teacher showed me. Well, in this y prime, try to add some successive polynomials, like try to maybe subtract x squared, and let's see what we get. y minus x squared prime, well, the derivative of minus x squared is 2x, so let's add 2x, and this y minus x squared plus 2x. This cancels out, and lo and behold, we get y minus x squared prime equals y minus x squared. But it says the derivative of this function is the function itself, and the only ones that satisfy this are constants of exponential function. y minus x squared is c e to the x. And so in particular, y is x squared plus c e to the x. And um, why not? Let's just add an initial condition. Let's assume y of 0 is 0. And then we just get 0 equals 0 plus c e to the 0, but this just implies that c is 0. And so in the end, the function that satisfies this differential equation is x squared. Ah. And in case you're curious, let's actually verify that it solves the differential equation. So is it true that the half derivative of x squared equals to minus the function, so minus x squared plus x squared plus uh, 8 over 3 squared of pi x to the 3 halves. Well, is the sky blue? I hope so. Because notice, in fact, we have calculated that the half derivative of x squared is 8 over 3 squared of pi times x to the 3 halves. So woohoo, this works. Last but not least, a couple of applications, or I guess one application other than quantum mechanics. Fractional differential equations, they're very good to describe broken processes. So think like a fluid that goes through something super viscous and is very um, broken, if you wish. And there are, I think, other applications on my fractional half derivative video as well. And last but not least, thank you, Vibing Math, for this idea. This was excellent. Thank you. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.